and I'll just listen. I decide okay, to take Mom, my time. Okay, Mom, I'm going to ask you about Dad. You just got married, and uh, you're pregnant with Junior. Uh, I'm just wondering, when was Dad born? He was born in 1947 on September 12th. And then where was he uh, born at? Amboy, Illinois. And you said he was born where? Amboy. Yeah, but I mean, where was he born at? The hospital? On their farmhouse, no hospital. Okay, so he was born in their house. Mm -hmm. And how long did he live there? I'm not 100% certain. But okay. uh, eventually they moved to the home on Atwood Avenue. In Rockford. Uh-huh. And then how, he had how many brothers and sisters? There was 11. Okay, S counting him? Yes. And then and he, he was the seventh. Okay, and then can you tell me they're uh, in order, like from oldest to youngest? Yeah, I will do the best I can. Maynard, uh -huh. Darlene, uh -huh. George, okay. Gladdy, uh -huh. Jack, uh -huh. Butch, okay. um, Jill, uh -huh. Bonnie, uh -huh. Rosella, uh -huh. uh, Twyla, Yep. And Margie. Is that okay. 11? Yep, that's 11. Okay. So you named them all. Yeah. And, uh, and you never met any of them until you ended up going to the, uh, the wedding. Right. So who wasn't at the wedding out of those? Most of them. There was only maybe. When did you meet any of the rest of them? We, w we had uh, went back to Rockford for a visit so I could get to know them a little better. That's when I first went to the house on Atwood. So and you didn't go to that house until then and you don't know how long they lived there? They'd lived there for many, many years. I know that. All the kids pretty much grew up in that house. Okay. And it looked, it reminded me my first, my first, uh, idea when I saw the house and went in there and met them was I felt like Grandma Moore was the little old lady that lived in the shoe. She had so many children she didn't know what to do. It was so so tiny with 11 children growing up in a four bedroom house. And they had no bathroom? No bathroom. It was an outside toilet. And they No, no running water. They pumped it and brought it in in buckets and did dishes and whatever. What was his parents' names? Irma. Wait, no, I'm sorry. Come in. Inez. I'm sorry. Inez and James. Was who's who, whose parents? Your dad's? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Mar <laughs> Marjorie and Francis. Who was Inez and James? Uh, Grandpa Moore's parents. Oh, okay. So that's his parents. Mm-hmm. Okay. And do you know when they were born? No. Okay. No. Do you remember when they died? Uh, Grandpa Moore died in uh, 84. Okay. Uh, Halloween, I believe. Okay. And Grandma? After that, a few years after that. I can't tell you, it's special, you know, right off. I okay. can't. I don't expect you to remember. I just thought maybe I'd ask and see. It was you after I divorced, a few years after I divorced. Okay. So, um, then, so you were married to, to dad and then you guys were living where again? At the time of the divorce? No, we're, we're going back to when you first got married. Oh, we lived in Beloit. Okay, and then where did you live after that and who was living there where you were living at in Beloit? We lived in our own apartment, and then... Right, with, with who? who? With me and him. Yeah, but what boys were born there, and how long? Oh, Bobby and Junior were both born in Beloit at okay, the hospital. Okay, and they both lived in that, that apartment where you lived at? No, we moved to another upper apartment. When, where was that? Townline Avenue, when Bobby was born. Okay, and, we lived and on, that's in, in Beloit, we too? We did live in that first one I was talking about. Now, no, I'm sorry down the street next to my mom in another house um, on Wheeler Avenue. And it, it was a two bedroom. And we lived there when Junior was born. And then we moved up to Beloit. That was in South Beloit. And we moved to Beloit 
uh, up on the side of town where my Aunt Bebba lived on uh, Town Lane Avenue and in the upper apartment. So at this time, did Grandma meet Ross? In little time. Well, it was around the time shortly after I had Bobby. Okay, yeah. So um, where did you live when after Bob was born and what happened on with Town Dan and, all, and, and after all of that? Townline well, Avenue is where we lived when Bob was born. And that was Boyd. And that was, yeah, and Boyd. And that's where Mom got with Russ. It was after her divorce or annulment from Dick. And did they move to the house they lived in? Mm-hmm. And what was that uh, street again? 553 Northwestern Avenue. And so they lived there? Mm -hmm. The entire time. Right after Bob was born? Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, so Dan, Dan's born. Where was Dan born at? In Rockford. We moved back to Rockford. Where did you live in Rockford when Dan was born? On 6th Avenue, 9, 12 and a half. 9, 12 and a half, 6th Avenue? Mm hmm And did you live there when Kathy was born? No, we lived at 115 Vincent. When Kathy was born? Mm -hmm. So you moved again? Mm-hmm. Well, we moved a lot back then. Uh-huh. And then... That was a house. Okay. So, and that was in Rockford too, right? Mm-hmm. It was uh, one or two streets over, one street over from his parents. Okay. And then from there, you moved to Nine Montrose. Montrose after that, with when Kathy was a baby still. Mm -hmm. That's where I lived when I had Kathy. What was the address on Montrose? Isn't that where I should remember? Isn't that where Sam lived too? Yeah. Well, he didn't. He didn't live there. He moved in with us after we got the house. Yeah, but he lived there after. After it, yeah, he did after. I can't tell you the exact address, I don't remember. But it was on Montrose? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then uh, you moved to Nina Terrace after mm -hmm. that, and I was born? Yep. Was I born before you guys moved to Nina Terrace or after? After. So Bill was born, Billy. Mm-hmm. After, after you moved to, so you moved to Nina Terrace and then I was born? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then... Kathy was born when we lived on Montrose. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then so you moved to Nina Terrace, and you lived on Nina Terrace when I was born, and then Tori was born. Tori was born while we lived on Nina Terrace as well. Okay, and uh, uh, you had uh, ended up seeing Brian again during that time, right? I didn't see Brian again at all until... The first time was 1970, after Kathy's birth. She was maybe a year old, something like that. I seen him, he stopped by the house where we lived, just stopped in and said, I'm out, I just got back from Vietnam. Okay, and I, then... And I only seen him briefly at the door and Twyla was there, and Margie, my brothers. It was no big secret. Okay, and then... Um, but I told him, you know, hey, I'm still married to Gil. I'm not going anywhere. I've got children. So that was about it. And I noticed that he looked different than when I'd seen him earlier. He had the long hair, you know. And when was that? 1970. What, do you remember what month or anything? No? Nothing I, particular? I don't. Not right off. Okay, and Sam, was Sam still in? Sam had gotten home and was living with me and your dad. On Vincent. Tell me the story of, of Sam. Well, Sam was shot in 1967. Yeah, but tell me about him going to in the Army and everything. Oh, okay. He went in the Army shortly, I want to say, after me and your dad got married. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 1967. Okay. So we were married a couple of years. In fact, uh, it was after, right after Danny was born. That he went, and we lived on Sixth Avenue. So I that would have been what year? Nineteen sixty. Wait a minute. Okay, he left in sixty-seven, August sixty-seven. Okay. Um. No, I'm sorry. He left on his birthday, June of sixty-seven. What birthday? When's his birthday? Second of June. Okay. And he was eighteen. Okay. That's when he went to Nam. Okay. And it was his second time. He enlisted. He re-enlisted in the army. He had already been in. 
you know, since he was 17, so for a year, I guess. So then he re-enlisted to go to Vietnam, and he left in June. So did him and Brian know each other at all? No. Okay. No, never had met. All right. Uh, but anyway, he went to Vietnam in 1967 in uh, June on his birthday, and he was shot the end of August of 67. He was only over there a couple of months. And, uh, okay, and um, what's the story of that? He was out on uh, guard duty um, for his platoon. They were in the war on the front lines. And Sam, being new in Vietnam in the jungle, was pretty afraid, as you can imagine, a kid 18 years old. But anyway, he was put on guard duty and his platoon were back a few a ways and uh, hiding in their bunkers. And uh, he was told to stay there where he was at and uh, not to go back and look for the platoon unless the enemy was approaching. And so the other troops, or his, the rest of his platoon was some ways back and uh, Sam waited and it was dark and they were in the jungle and everything and he was really scared and the rest of the platoon was pretty scared too. Well, anyway, in the middle of the night, uh, Sam thought he was hearing different noises of the Kong, Viet Cong coming through. So he went to go find the rest of the troops for support. And when he went back to find the troops, they thought he was one of the Viet Cong and they opened fire on him. And he was shot in the spine and the hand. And it left him paralyzed from the chest down. And uh, How long was he over there until he came back after that? Oh, uh, he didn't come home for over a year. He was in Japan in a hospital. He was flown out from the Viet Cong jungle to a hospital in Japan and then flown from there to Colorado, Fort Carson, and was in a hospital. And then sent to a hospital in Heinz Hospital in Chicago. And what year was that? And when was that? All in up till 68. He didn't come home until after Dan's birth in 68. Or 69s when he, I think 69. And where did he out. live when he came back? With me and your dad. How long did he live with you guys? And oh, what what what, what houses were at? Um, he lived where? Okay, he started out when he come back from Chicago Hines. He went to my mother's house because, like all kids, he wanted to be with mom, and he was horribly injured and in a wheelchair for life, and uh, just 18 years old and. He had lots of money. He was a soldier and a vet. And uh, so he went straight to my mother's and he did not get the care that he needed. They didn't help him dress. They didn't help him in the wheelchair. They didn't help him with much of nothing. And uh, it hurts me to say that, but it's a fact. So Gil and I uh, went to visit my brother at my mom's and they were in a bar drinking up money that he was providing. My brother was there with no care and very upset and wanted to go somewhere and then we wanted to get the hell out of that house. So me and Gil loaded him up, took him home with us and we were living on Vincent and I was about to have Kathy. Okay. So we took him home with us and I took care of him. And uh, he lived with us all through that and then when we got the house on Montrose, he moved with us and he lived there all that time with us until I couldn't take anymore because he was very depressed and acting out and drinking and doing drugs with neighbors and it got to be pretty bad and I had to get help for him to have care, which he held against me for a long time because he wanted to die. He was 18, he didn't want to live paralyzed, but he was my brother. And I couldn't sit there and watch him rot to death, which he was doing, literally. 
And, was uh, he drinking a lot? Yeah. And, and shooting up the ceilings of my house, and I had little children. You had guns? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. If we went to the Speedway, which we liked to do back then, we'd take the kids and go to the Speedway, and we'd come home, and he'd have neighbors over and drinking with them and doing drugs and shooting up the TV, shooting up the ceiling, doing all kinds of crazy stuff, having bad reactions from war and uh, letting neighbors take care of him that were collecting four or five hundred dollars a month and not doing a thing for him. And he was supplying drugs, alcohol, all kinds of stuff. We'd come home and to a mess and he'd be fighting though he was on a cart and no way to really defend himself but he was drunk and being crazy. So I had to get hold of the uh, Veterans Administration and let them know what was going on. He had bed sores all over him, and like I said, his flesh was literally rotting off of him, and really bad. So he had to go back into the VA hospital, and I signed off. I could have had power of attorney over his money and let him continue to live with me. I chose not to because I didn't want anybody thinking I was after his money. I did not want his money. I wanted my brother alive and with me. But it ended up I had to go against him and go to them and tell them the way he was living. And they come and investigated and found out what I told them was true. And they found out also the people that he was paying to take care of him were not taking care of him and what they were all about and about the drugs and the neighbors and all the above. So Sam was put back into the hospital in order to get psychiatric help and also to get help to get off alcohol, and which he did. But for 10 years, my brother wouldn't talk to me because he turned on me for turning him in. And he felt like because he was 18 and paralyzed, if he wanted to die, I should have left him alone to do that. But. That's not me, and I couldn't do it. So were you talking to him when he lost his legs? Yeah, we were talking, but mostly on the phone. I wasn't seeing him much. What years was that? Oh, when did that gosh. happen? Do you remember? Mm, let me think. After me and Brian got married, me and your dad split up. That's no, when, even that, before that. It was before that because... That's when you started talking to him. Yeah, right. Saying. Well, me and your dad were still... We were still married. And in fact, we went camping with him and... Where did you go a, camping at? Uh, Wisconsin Dells. When was that? Uh, Kathy was maybe two and a half. It was before you were born. Okay. So you yeah. went camping with them in Wisconsin Dells during mm -hmm, that time? With Bonnie and Jim, Sam, yeah. me and your dad. And the kids. I didn't even know that. Yeah. And uh, we just, he lived with us. That was, uh, I'm trying to think. In fact, I think we were still living on Vincent at that time. No, no. We were living over there on Montrose. Okay. And that's when everything went down and I had to turn it in. So just after that is when he started losing his legs? He lost his legs after he went back in the hospital when I had... Turned them in and everything. So we, when we lived on Nana Terrace? When we lived on, on Montrose. That's when he started losing his legs? Yep. So they, before they I was born? They put him in psych, psychiatric care and in AA for alcoholism, and they found out that he had gangrene from bed sores, which caused them to have to amputate his legs. First one, and then a year or two later, the other. Okay. And then um, we had... After that incident on Montrose, Sam bought our house on Montrose because he wanted to continue to live there till he could have a house built for somebody like himself. Mm -hmm. So we bought the house on Niner Terrace and moved there. And that's where you were born mm -hmm. in 73. Yep. And um, Sam remained in the hospital. Gosh, I'm trying to think. Um, Maybe 75, 76 at least. And then he had that house built on Sunbird Lane. Out in, uh, in Chesney mm -hmm. Park? Yep. 
unless it was all built according to what he needed for himself and he got out of recovery for drinking and his mental situation. He moved in there and he had a relative of my family, not a relative, but a friend of my family, Regina, to take care of him. And she had previously took care of one of my cousins that was a quadriplegic, my Aunt Beverly's um, son. And uh, so she, Sam had more money to offer her, so she went to work for Sam and took care of him. So was the rest of your brothers talking to him at all or anything mm -hmm. during that yeah. time? Yeah. So Dad or uh, Sam talked to Al and he talked to Leonard Al or? occasionally. Mostly it was like my dad. Yeah, and just Al. tell me a little bit about your other brothers. Oh, okay, Al and my brother. I mean, Bill and my brother would come occasionally to see Sam when he lived on Mount Rose. So who again? Albert. I mean, God. Bill and my brother Al. Bill, the your, my your step stepdad? Yeah, okay. Sam's dad. Okay. And his brother, Albert, my And brother. I'm named after Bill, right? Yes. Okay. But he would come down and spend time with, you know, Sam for the day or whatever. In fact, for a minute, he went and lived with Bill and Al at Bill's house um, until his house was finished being built. And okay. Bill had power of attorney to take care of him because I wouldn't accept it. Okay. So he lived with his dad until he got his own home built. And then what about Leonard and Ed? Leonard was married to Brenda, of which was When his was that? What year? They got married, I want to say, maybe 70, somewhere in there. Okay. And Albert got married maybe 69, somewhere in there. Okay. And he had a son, and uh, Leonard and his first wife, they didn't have any children. Um, then Leonard later married Brenda, and they had Jeremy and Nicole. So when was he married to his first wife? He was Leonard. young. He was like 18, 19 years old. So that after he got out of the foster home. So what? probably 68 or 69. So he wasn't married very long. Mm -mm. And then he married Brenda. And when was... Actually, Albert and Leonard married cousins. Okay. Girls that were cousins and pretty close. And they were both living in Boy. What happened with Albert? Albert and his wife split too after one year of marriage. Okay, and he never he, found nobody else, never got married again? No, he did have a child with uh, a girl named Carla that he had a long-term affair with, and they had Angela. So he had two children. Are uh, they still alive? What, his children? Oh, yeah. Okay. You Angela, ever talked to them? It's been, not since Sam passed away. But, yeah, Lee, I've, he looks exactly like my brother Al, except he's tall. A lot taller than Al. Uh, Angela looks a lot like both her parents, but both their parents are dead. My brother passed in 2006, and Angela's mother, Carla, passed away of a heart attack like 2007, maybe a year later. And then uh, Leonard had his kids win? With Brenda. Uh, they had Jeremy and Nicole in 76 and uh, maybe 78. Okay, and then uh, Ed. Ed had married uh, Pam in, I want to say 70, early 70s. Yeah, I remember you guys didn't talk very much. What no, happened there? No, we didn't at that time because when he married Pam, they moved to Winnebago and, uh, or Seward. We did go out and see him occasionally. I don't know. If I remember that, yeah. Him. But we weren't real close because him and Pam went on with their life and we did our life and we just saw each other from time to time. He had been in a foster home for all them years. So, and he lived with me for a while. It was like a back and forth situation, you know. Ed did? Mm-hmm. Huh. When, when did he live on, with you? When we lived on 6th Avenue and I had Danny... Ed came to live with See, me. See, I didn't even know you lived on 6th Avenue. I didn't even that. That was back when Danny was born. Okay. 
and we and uh, Ed had come and lived with us for mm -hmm. a while, and he had run away from the home, the foster home. Well, How old was he at the time? Then? Oh God, thirteen, fourteen, maybe. So he was still young. And he needed to go to school, and I wasn't having had three babies, one in a year, you know. I couldn't afford it and didn't know even really how to go about getting him into school, you know, and where he could live with me, you know, and him to make it. And I think he needed to go back to school. And I told him that, and I told him that he'd be better off going back to the foster home. So that's what he did. I took him back to the Lups, and I took him back and raised him. Did he hold that against you? Or mm -mm. No, he, he was okay he was a, with that? Yeah, he was a, it was a good decision. Okay. Did the you like Did you like Pam? Did you guys get along good? Uh-huh. Yeah? We hung out quite a bit until after Stephanie was born, their daughter. Okay. In fact, even after Kimberly was born. In fact, you and Kimberly are very close in age. Okay. But after that, it just seemed like they just kind of stuck to their self and... Ed worked an awful lot, uh, a lot of hours, and they lived out on the farm in the sewer, and we just didn't see a whole lot of them. So this is a lot of the stuff that happened in the seventies. Mm -hmm. um, where did you guys, you and my, or you and Dad, when you went on dates, where would you guys go to in the seventies on dates? Dancing. Where at? A place called the Crystal Palace. Where was that? Downtown on State Street, I want to say. Uh huh. State and. Charles, does that make sense? Somewhere in that area? I don't know. Um, and then when you went to the Frontier Lounge on Auburn Street. Uh-huh. Um, well, that was the two main places, I'll tell you that. A place called the Crystal Palace. Wait, isn't that what you just said? Yeah, I might have. I'm, I'm sorry, my mind. No, you're fine. I'm tired. Keep going. I'm just, okay. But that was the main places right there. Um, we went dancing a lot of times with Bonnie and Jim and Rosella, and oh, we went to True's Tavern where his mother hung out. Where was that? West State. Okay. We went there quite often with his mom. And, uh, oh, Bambi. Um, oh. And other than that, a lot of times your, your dad and I went to the outdoor and we took you kids a lot of times. Most of the time, that's what we did for entertainment was Sundays we'd go for Sunday drives and go up to Galena and all over the place. Yeah, I remember you guys used to go to... Uh, and we'd take the van and listen to music and just go driving around all over the place. The donut shop? Yep, and we went to the donut shop. When did you shop. start going to the donut shop? When you lived uh, on Nina Terrace or yep, before that? Yep, on Nina Terrace. The kids were, the older kids was going to Awana's. Uh, Bible study thing. Uh huh. Yeah, I remember that. And when they'd go to Awanas, we'd take you little ones, and we'd go to the donut shop. Yeah, that was awesome. I and we would that. laugh because we would give you money to go up and get your own donut and pick out your own. You and Tori. So, um, did uh, Dad? Where did Dad work during all this time? At that time, he was working at Dubuque. Uh, yeah, but I mean, before that, after he worked at where you said, where else did he work after that? Your first place you said he was working at? First place he worked where he was driving truck was Illinois Canyon. No, no, after, what was the first place that you said that you, where you met him at? And you oh, guys were Admiral in Harvard. Okay, where did he work after that? Oh my gosh. Um, he had a lot of jobs? Mm -mm. Okay. A lot of times he wasn't working and we were on welfare. Okay. I'm just being up front. No, that's cool. I'm, I want to know. Okay. Uh, it wasn't pleasant those first years. It was really very hard. I had babies. So you guys lived on public assistance? Quite a bit. And your dad was young. I mean, 18, 19, 20 years old. But what are some of the jobs? Just tell me. Um, I'm trying to think of After that, one that of the junkyards up in South Beloit was... Uh, A lot of people that live up there, young people, would work there. I can't think of the name. It's okay. Next. Uh, he helped my Uncle Art down in A&B uh, Salvage Yard. Okay. Um, I think he worked at Freeman. What is Freeman's? Uh, like a place that helps make shoes and stuff. Mm-hmm. 
That's all I remember. I'm not 100%. Yeah, but you were just saying, like, Dubuque? Huh? You just said Dubuque. Well, that was after... Yeah, I want to know all of that. Okay, well, then he didn't really start working steady and good and stay employed till he started driving trucks. And that was when we lived on Montrose. He got a job. At, and who uh, had just been born then? Kathy. So that would have been when Kathy was born, okay. Mm-hmm. And that was where? On Montrose Avenue. Yeah, I mean, where did he work? Illinois Candy and Tobacco. And what is that? Where was that at? I don't know. I can't tell you right where it was. But okay. he was driving truck and delivering candy and cigarettes and whatever to okay. stores. Uh -huh. And then after that, he worked. We went moved over on uh, Niner Terrace. He worked at Dubuque Packing. At what packing? Dubuque. Okay. And he also worked at Viking Chemical. Okay. I can't recall. I want to say that maybe was before he worked at Dubuque Packing, I think it was. Okay. And how long did he work at Dubuque and what happened? He was at Dubuque quite a while, a few years. And he was at Viking Chemical. What happened to where he didn't work there? Hurt his arm. Well, no, what, wait, yeah. When he, was that? Sometime in the 70s. You don't remember? No, that was before we divorced. So that was when we lived on uh, nine or t or 18th Street. He did that. That's when he got hurt. So he worked at Dubuque that long? I, uh, no. But, oh, I'm getting all confused here, okay? Because some of these... I know he worked a few years at each of these jobs, but I, it's trying kind of hard for me to remember what come first. Well, that's okay. If you don't remember, you don't remember. But I know he worked. Well, did you work at all after you worked Your at... Your dad never allowed me to work after I worked at Carter Corporation. and that What was, is Carter Corporation? It was down on 11th No, Street. I mean, you worked at the first place with him, which yeah, was... Yeah, and then I didn't... I wasn't able to work anymore until, uh, I want to say... But that wasn't Carter Corporation. No. So that, what was the first was place Admiral you worked at? Admiral in Harvard. Okay, so Admiral in Harvard or whatever in you said. Harvard, yeah. Okay, after that, where did you work? At Wood Vacuum. Okay, and how long did you work there? Not long, maybe a year. You know, was, me and your dad both worked there. Did you have Junior at the time? No, I, I was about to have Dan. Okay, so you worked while the kids were... In 68, maybe. While the, who watched the babies while you went to work? I, I can't remember. It's been too many years ago. Friends. Okay, so you, you did have a babysitter? Mm-hmm. And then... And I didn't get to work for long. Your dad was a very the, jealous man. And then after that, you worked at some... Um, Carter Corporation. And when was that? Who was... I think after Atwood. Who who was born, though, during that time? What babies were you with at that time? I'm thinking you. So it was when I was... Before I had you. So before you Between had me... Between Kathy and you. And then your dad... Which, that's when your dad was working at Viking Chemical, which was right next door at Carter Corporation. So that was the end of you having a job, pretty much. He would come over on breaks and stuff, make sure I wasn't talking to anybody. I'm, I'm just telling you. But he was jealous. And because he couldn't, you know, he had to drive truck. He could not be over there constantly. So he decided it would be better if I was a stay-at-home mom. And then he wouldn't worry. So, that's what happened. I became a stay-at-home mom, and he drove truck. Okay, I'm going to stop right there, though.